Today I'd like to show you that the England Gambit can be way more tricky than you think. So I'll first start by showing you the main moves. And it's a Gambit of the Epon. And after this we will attack it with the Knight. And the opponent will usually defend it by their Knight. We will attack the Gambit of the Queen. They still don't want to lose their pawn, so they're going to defend it by the bishop. And after that, we can perform this check. Now, it is a fork of the bishop and the king, but if your opponent knows what he's doing, he will just bring his bishop back, defending the bishop and attacking our queen at the same time. Now, the main trap starts after we go queen takes b2. And this is a mistake according to the engine, but yeah, it's a trap, so opponents can fall for this. And... One of the things to notice, okay, the rook is under attack here, so what do we do about that? Well, usually a lot of opponents try this move. Saying, okay, the bishop is defending the rook, the knight is defending the bishop, so everything's good. But here we can play this one, and yeah, it's the main trap in this variation. They can try to bring their queen here to defend, but after we take, the queen is now pinned. They don't want to lose the rook, so they're like, okay, here still the rook is defended, but now they leech this checkmate. Now that's the main trap, I've already showed that in my, on this channel, but um, what if they know about this and they play the right moves? So let's go back, and in this position, the best move is actually to move your knight here. Now you don't have that trap, but there's still quite some other traps we can try. And one try, and it is a bit risky, but yeah, that's why it's a trap. We can go for knight b4. And the main idea behind this move is that we are now attacking this pawn. And opponents might not often see this because they are not used to this move. Almost everybody plays the bishop move here and they're not used to seeing this. So the correct way for white to defend is by going knight d4. Um, and in that case, we actually have a bad position, so like I said, it is a risk. Um, but if they don't and they're like, okay, uh, queen and knight are lined up, so let's attack it with the rook, right? Looks good. Well, now we can take the pawn, like I said, we were attacking it. And notice the king can't move anywhere and we're checking it. So they actually have to give up the queen here and we can just take back and we've now won their queen. We're behind on development a little bit because we're... Uh, we have an extra queen, that's uh, not a problem, and we're going to have a really good game after this. So, okay, um, let's go to the right position. Um, let's say you think, okay, my opponent probably knows about this, he's a bit higher rated, so I don't feel like going for that trick. Well, there's another one. You can go for the standard move. Again, uh, this is maybe easier, because whether they place the knight or the bishop here, you can always play this move. And the continuation for white here is to attack your queen. Now again, white has a better position here, but it can be really tricky and you can actually go for this line where you actually sacrifice your queen. So you just take the knight and after they take, you take back. And this is again a risk, but it can pay off uh, quite often in my experience. So notice that the king is in check now, so they have to block. If they block with the queen, you win the queen back, and that's an easy game. So they're going to block with the knight. After this, you're just going to take this pawn and basically say, okay, I just grabbed the pawn and hope they don't notice that this actually comes with a threat as well. Um, just for instance, I'm going to show you. Let's say they don't see the threat and play a random move like, I don't know, a4. You can actually bring your knight here and start attacking it. Um, a bit more usual is for them to go here. Uh, the idea is they want to develop the bishop, right? Uh, it's the last piece they need to develop uh, before they can castle. Uh, so this looks really good because this diagonal is open. So it looks like it's a good move. But after this, we can play knight c4 as well. And notice this knight is pinned, so they can't take our knight. And we now have two attackers on this knight. Uh, another thing to note is that they can't attack uh, defend this knight again so the queen is defending the king is defending but that's it they can defend, defend it anymore so what do they do now again if they do something random like a4 you can just take the knight and they are forced to give up the queen so they give up the queen you take back they take back and if you count the material we're up a piece here so that's always good 
But let's say they do notice and they're like, okay, I can't move this knight because it's pinned. I also can't protect it. But I can create a square for my king so that I don't have to take with my queen. So they're going to continue with the plan and they play bishop g2. Now in this case, we can still take this knight. But now we're going to take it with our knight. And you might be wondering, okay, um, are we actually getting compensation for losing our queen in this variation? But uh, the main point is uh, we are threatening a lot now. So we're attacking the rook. The king can't move actually, the knight is covering this square. So we are threatening some discover checks as well. So it's really dangerous. Again, if black does something random, we can just take the rook and we're up a lot of material again. Because if you count the material, even though they have a queen, we have a lot more material for that. But even if they don't and they try to save the rook, something like this, it's still good for us because, well, let's count. They have one, two rooks, and we have two rooks. So that's the same. We have a light squared bishop, they have a light squared bishop. And if you see everything that's not colored, we have three mi 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 minor pieces for the queen, actually. And... That's actually good for us. So they're all worth three points, the minor pieces, the queen is worth nine, so that's equal. Um, but usually three pieces have a lot more flexibility than having the queen. And on top of that, in this position, we're actually having a lot of threats because again, we have discovered attacks, uh, things like that. So yeah, this is a better position. It's a difficult one, so you have to study this one, but if you're an Angl England Gambit uh, player, I really recommend looking into this because you can have some really fun games and how nice is it to sacrifice a queen and then win a game later on. So uh, yeah, I hope you learned something from this and uh, I hope you can trap your opponents as well. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.